Hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to Mason African Motives. Uh, still on our revisions on the trigonometry from our follow up uh, exam revisions that we are going to be focusing on. Uh, so, we also had the exam revision part two. So, make sure that you watch it on the members uh, platform. So, make sure that you join the membership platform so that you won't be limited to any video to watch, so that you can be able to watch also those uh, platform videos that we have. Uh, for the members as a token of thanksgiving to the members of the family Mason African Motives. So we're not going to waste much time. This is uh, uh, a revision that you're just going to work through uh, and see how you're supposed to attempt this typical question. Question number three, 3.1, we are given to solve the following trigonometric equation. Uh, if we are given that two cos cubed x minus cos x is equal to zero uh, and our x is being taken from zero to 180 degrees. So like I said, you are supposed to consider the interval that you are given much. You're supposed to consider your interval in this case. All right, so what is it that you're gonna do? Uh, let us just have our equation aside. So this is question uh, 3.1. So we are given uh, two cos cubed X minus the cosine of X must be equal to zero and our X can be taken from zero to 180. So our X is taken from zero degrees to 180 degrees. This is the interval that we are given for, for X. All right, so like I said, whenever you're solving your, your equations, you can apply the a, a, any concept like uh, according to the question that you are given. In this case, we cannot use the quadratic formula but we can apply our factorization. As you can see, we've got the cosine of X here. We also have the cosine of X being common. So we can factor out uh, the cosine of X, which is if we divide here, there are three of them. So we're going to be left with the two of these cos. So that will be cos squared X. All right, the cos of X and the cos of X will cancel. So we've got negative one. Uh, this must be equal to zero like that. So from the zero concept, remember the product of two to be equal to zero, one of these must be equal to zero. So either A is equal to zero or B is equal to zero. So that's what you're gonna have. The cosine of X must be equal to zero or this bracket must be equal to zero. So we must equate each part that we have there equal to, to zero. So it's either the cosine of X must be equal to zero or uh, two cos squared X minus one must be equal to zero. So as you can see already here, cos x is the subject. So what we need is to make also cos x the subject here. So we can transpose the negative one to this side, it becomes a positive. So that will be two cos squared x is equal to positive one, uh, divide by two, divide by two. So that will be cos squared x is equal to a half. So in terms of cos x, it means you can introduce the square root. So the moment you introduce the square root, this will be the square root of a half, but we know that it must be plus or minus the square root of any number is going to be given as what? A plus or minus. So we've got plus or minus for the square root of a number. So these are the indications of our cos x where we are going to calculate the reference angles. And as we know that the reference angle is the one that is going to give us the exact solution where we are going to have the exact solution. But I said, when you are dealing with the cos of x or the sine of x equal to zero or equal to one, these ones, you can also refer them graphically from your graph you know that from the graph, of course, it's a uh, zero night like this. This is the graph, of course, where we have got uh, uh, one and negative one, which is at zero degrees. Uh, then we've got 90 degrees here, 180. We've got a 270 degrees, 360 there at the end. So if we are to check if the cosine, if the graph, of course, is at zero, it's along this line here. Yeah, that's where it is equal to zero. That is the angles that we have there. It's 90 degrees and 270 degrees. So these are the angles that we are supposed to be expecting to have for X, which is 90 degrees or X being equal to 270 degrees from the graph, of course. This is something that you can just have to obtain your reference angle from your calculator. In this case, we can actually work that out to say we need uh, a cos of zero, just shift cos zero in this case, which is going to be 90 degrees. As yes, we can have that, which is our reference angle, then we can find the other angle 
uh, by subtracting from 360, which is uh, actually fine, but on a condition that you can apply the graphical concept, yes, you can also have your values. But in terms of the interval that we are given, remember we are given that our X is supposed to be taken from zero to 180. So it means 270 is not part of our solution. So this is not part of our solution. Our solution is going to be X. We need values in between zero to 180 degrees. So meaning to say the first X that we are going to obtain there is uh, 90 degrees, all right? On this one, uh, there we just have to use our calculator, find your reference angle. It's a, there's a plus, there's a minus. So the plus and the minus there is for the region, which quadrant are you going to consider? Which quadrant are you going to, to consider? But for the reference angle, you just use this as it is. You just use the half as it is. This does not affect the plus or does not affect the minus, all right? So that is the condition of your reference angle. So your reference angle is simply going to be across the square root of a half. We do not consider to say uh, there's a plus or there's a minus. We just take it as a positive. Then the plus here or the negative is the one that tells us about the quadrant where cos is a positive. So that's the idea of your reference angle in this case. So the reference angle is going to be across of the square root of a half. So let us just use our calculator and see that's gonna be shift cos, uh, the square root of a half. All right, we need the square root of a half, which is one over two, like this. So that is going to give us, uh, in this case, 45 degrees. Make sure that your calculator is in degrees there. So the reference angle is going to be uh, 45 degrees. With the reference angle that we have determined, we are now going to relate to the signs that we are given here. We've got a positive and also not forgetting our interval from zero to 180 degrees. So we are going to start with a positive in this case, all right? Because here there are two solutions, cos being a positive and cos being a negative. So for cos being a positive, which quadrants are we going to consider if cos is being a positive from our all students take calculus or the cast diagram? Uh, we are going to have all students take calculus or cast. So cos is being positive in the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. That's where it is positive. But here, because of the fourth quadrant, you can see that the angle is greater than uh, 180 degrees because this is our reference angle. It's going to be 360 minus reference angle. And this angle is greater than uh, what we need, which is to, uh, from 0 to 180. Remember, our interval is from 0 to 180. So meaning to say the solution that we are supposed to have in the fourth quadrant is not going to be taken. We are going to take the solution in the first quadrant. And we know that in the first quadrant, the actual angle, which is X, is equal to the reference angle. In this quadrant, it's X is equal to 180. I explained this part, 180 minus the reference angle in this quadrant is going to be 180 degrees plus the reference angle. In this quadrant, is going to be 360 degrees minus the reference angle, as you can see. It's more than 108. So in the first quadrant, our X is going to be equal to the reference angle. So that's our X is going to be the reference angle of 45 degrees. So that's the actual angle now, which is X. All right, then we move on to the negative. So you're just gonna use the same quadrant. I mean, the same uh, diagram that we have, but considering where cos is being a negative because we also have a negative. So for the negative angles that you're gonna consider for cos, cos it's a negative in the second quadrant because we do not have C for cos. There is S for sine and here it's for tan. So it means if sine is positive, cos is going to be negative and, uh, and uh, also cos is going to be negative here. So these are the quadrants where cos is what? Negative. But because of the solution, we can't consider the third quadrant because it's above 180. Remember 180 ends at this point and our interval is from zero to 180. Yes, we're supposed to take that solution, but because of the interval that we are given from zero to one eight, we are now limited there. We are now limited in the second quadrant where cos is a negative, but the other solution was supposed to be here in this third quadrant, but it's above 180. This angle is greater than 180, so we can't consider that. So meaning to say for the negative angle, our X is going to be equal to 
one, remember in the second quadrant, X is equal to 180 degrees minus the reference angle because your reference angle will be somewhere here. This will be your reference angle here. So the angle that you need is this one up to this point. So it will be 180 degrees for the straight line minus this reference angle. So each and every quadrant, uh, like I explained from the introduction that there's a reference angle, each and every quadrant, uh, I think you watch the video, not just make sure that you watch it so that you understand what I'm explaining on the introduction part. All right, so that's our X is going to be 180 degrees minus the reference angle. And our reference angle is given as what? 45 degrees. So this is the reference angle that you're gonna subtract and X there is going to give us 135 degrees, which is less than 180. So these are the values of X that would satisfy the interval that we are given. Uh, there were so many values that we could have indicated, but because of the interval that we are given from zero to 180, it limits us to these values. So we saw that the first one there, where the X being 90 and here being 45 and here being 135. So therefore, our X is equal to, can start with the smaller one, 45 degrees, or it can be uh, 90 degrees, or our X is going to be equal to 135 degrees. All right, so that will be the solution in this case. This will be the values of X according to the interval. So as you can see, if you are solving a, a trigonometric equation, guys, if you, are, if you are dealing with a trigonometric equation, there are so many solutions that are supposed to be there. That's why you are supposed to be given an interval because there are so, so many solutions there. So that's why you are supposed to work with the interval that you are given. means the simplification is actually in your in your hands uh and also with the interval that you're given you work with uh what you're given from the interval all right so let us try to check the other part of the question here uh that was 3.2 prove that all right that's a proof there 3.2 you're supposed to prove that this whole part is equal to tan y and that is six marks all right there we've got a lot of things to consider all right let us just try and see what we're supposed to have here. All right, so that is, uh, we are given. All right, let me just try and write it as, uh, just aside. All right, somewhere here. So we are given uh, 3.2, that is the sine of 2i, in this case, minus the cosine of 2i plus one. Uh, and everything was over the sine of 2i plus the cos of 2y in this case, right? Plus one, this is equal to tan y. All right, so this one is, uh, we have got a lot of things there. What can we do? All right, uh, if we are to consider this, uh, it's going to be difficult if you work from the right-hand side. So definitely the best side to deal with there is the left-hand side, which is the one that has got a lot of things and a lot of complications that we have there. Uh, and also on the left-hand side, if we are to check again, we have got sine 2i cos 2i1 and sine 2i plus cos 2i plus 1. We can change these identities to their equivalent. Remember, from our double angle identities, the sine of 2i is 2 sine cos. So it's going to be 2 sine y the cosine of y. And the cosine of 2y is the one that complicates us because it has got a lot of identities there. Uh, remember, I talked about this, that the cosine of 2y can be given as the cos squared of y minus the sine squared of y. Also, it is equal to 2 cos squared y minus 1, also equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared of y like that. So meaning to say we've got uh, three identities that we are supposed to take into consideration. And there must be one which is best to use for a certain reason. All right, just because here yeah, there is a plus one here, yeah, there is a one there. And I can think of getting rid of this one or eliminating this one to say, because there is a one, I can think of eliminating this one. So it means whatever that I can take here must have, because here it's going to be negative cost. The negative is going to affect whatever that you have. 
meaning to say, in order for you to add this one, the number that you're going to have at the end must be a negative. So that negative one plus one can cancel, we get a zero. So which one is going to be best? All right, if we take this one, if you multiply by a negative, this one is going to be a positive one. So it's going to be one plus one, which is now a two. So we are, we are, we are, we are not eliminating this one. We are still having a complicated situation. At least let's remove these ones. So meaning to say it's best for us to choose this one because if we choose this, it is going to be like this, negative one, negative here, but then we've got one minus uh, two sine squared y. The moment you expand by negative, it will be negative one, negative, negative, it will be positive two uh, sine squared y like this, plus one, negative one plus one, that's a zero. So we have eliminated that. So like you can see, this is the best one to take. So it's gonna be negative cos two i. We are going to take this one, one minus uh, two sine squared y like that. All right, whatever that we have here, we are going to add a one. Okay, that's it. We move on to the denominator in this case. All right, we're gonna have the same thing. All right, guys, this denominator is too big. Right, let me just have it this way. So you're gonna move on to the denominator. We do the same thing, the sine of two i, uh, which is the same. This one, we just have a single or, or just one identity there. So there's no way that we can think of uh, eliminating one from this. We just have one identity. So this is going to be two uh, sine of y, the cosine of y in this case. We are back again to that cos, but this time it's a positive here. Yeah. So it means, whatever that you're gonna choose again must be able to eliminate this positive one. So it means yes, yeah, since yeah, it's a positive, we must choose a part where there's a negative. So that negative one plus one, it's a zero. So this is going to be the best one to choose this time. So that negative one here and this plus one will cancel, it, uh, will cancel out. So we're going to pick the second one. So it's gonna be two cos squared y, minus one, then plus this one. So as you can see, minus one plus one, that's a zero. All right, so that's it from our left-hand side. Expand the brackets on top there. Uh, we are going to have two sine y cos of y in this case, this one, just write as it is, all right? So it's gonna be the cos of y, then negative times one. So here, I'm just gonna write a single term. Negative times one, it's negative one. Negative times negative here is going to be positive two, sine squared y like this, then we have got a plus one at the end, which is not affected by this negative. So we are done, we have expanded by the negative this bracket. So as we can see, we are going to have negative one plus one, which is a zero. So we're going to remain with this part, right? So here I'm just gonna write the part that we are remaining with, which is two uh, sine squared y like this, all right? So that's now we have a single tab, the minus, that was the purpose uh, of, choosing an identity that will enable us to cancel at the end. That's why I was focused to say, write your three identities so that you pick the one that you are best, uh, the best that can cancel uh, the other part, all right. We can see that we have got the same scenario, negative one and positive one here in the denominator, that will be a zero. So meaning to say, we are going to remain in the denominator now. We are going to remain with this part here, which is two, uh, the sine of y, the cosine of y plus uh, two cos squared y like this. All right, so this is what you're gonna have. So as we can see, we can simplify this in further terms or in further simplification, but how? All right, there's something that is happening. Here there's a two, there's a two, there's a sine, here there's a sine, a cos, a cos. Here there's sine, there's cos. There's two and a two. We need to say we can factor out something that is common. Like, let us just consider maybe the numerator only. Let us just work with the numerator only. On the numerator there, we can factor out two sine y. Two sine y is common from the numerator. So we can factor out from the numerator on top, uh, two sine of y is common. So if we factor out this, we're gonna divide two sine y, cos y divided by two sine. This will cancel, we remain with the cosine of y in this case plus two and two will cancel. The sine squared divided to the sine of y is going to be sine of y We're gonna remain with the one of the sine there. All right, everything, just like the previous part, uh, this whole part is going to be affected over 
the denominator, you do the same thing. You have to focus what is common. There's two, there's two, there's cos, there's cos. So we're going to factor out two cos y in this case. All right, so if we factor out two cos of y in this case, what are you going to have? The cos of y and the cos of y cancels, two and two cancels will remain with the sine of y like this plus. We do the same thing, two and two cancel the cos squared and the cos is going to give us the cos of y like this. So this is what we are having at the end. And this is a simple, uh, I mean, a similar term, as we can see, is the same as we've got a plus b. a plus b is same as b plus a. It's one and the same thing, all right? So this is one and the same thing, meaning to say we can cancel this because it's a one and the same. It's same as sine y plus cos y. All right, so at the end, also you can cancel two and two, meaning to say we are remaining with uh, the sine of y in this case over the cosine of y. And this will give us, remember sine over cos, it's tan. So this is going to be the tan of y in this case. And this is what we have on the right-hand side. That is the tan of y. All right, so that was it, yeah. It was just seeming like it's a complicated question, but it's not actual, all right. So this is uh, actually what we have on the right-hand side. So as you can see, guys, identities, play around, play with your identities, manipulating. You must have that foresight when you are working with your identities. What is ahead? What is it that am I supposed to achieve at the end? If you have that foresight, you can be able to prove any identity, just like you are simplifying any given I, uh, identity in this case. So that was the simplification, guys, changing in the identities, the double angle, the double angle for sine, uh, but the double angle for cos is the most complicated one because you have to work with three identities and you have to choose the best according to your question that you're working with, not just to take because cos squared, cos 2y is equal to cos squared y minus sine squared, I just take that one, no, you have to, uh, figure out which one is best according to the question that you are answering. So that was uh, the idea. There's six marks for that. And um, all right, let us check question 3.3. Determine the value of sine 15 degrees. All right, so we need the value of uh, sine 15 degrees without the use of a calculator. Rationalize the, uh, the final answer. All right, that is four marks for that. All right, so that's question 3.3. Uh, 3.3, we need the value of sine 15. All right, what is it that we can do? So in order for us to obtain the sine of uh, 15 degrees, this we are going back to our special angles. Remember from our special angles, we've got uh, the angle of 45 degrees uh, from this triangle where this is one, one, and this is uh, actually square root of two. Then we have got uh, the triangle of uh, 60 degrees and 30 whereby this is 60 degrees, this is uh, 30 degrees, and this will be one, two, and we also have the square root of three. So meaning to say whenever you are to think of the special, I mean, to think of finding the value that we can use without having a calculator, we are supposed to think of these values because we know that this can be obtained even without a calculator. So what is it that you're gonna do? We have got an angle of 15 degrees, but we do not have 15 uh, on these angles. But we have to ask ourselves is, there, ourselves, is there any combination of any of these angles? Here I've got uh, 45 degrees, I have got uh, 30 degrees there, I have got uh, 60 degrees, I also have the 90 degrees as part of the right angle triangle. Is there any combination of angles that I can combine either by subtraction or addition and I'm going to obtain uh, 15 degrees, sorry for that, and I'm going to obtain uh, 15 degrees. Is there any part like that? That is the question that you're asking yourself. All right, so if we check, we've got 15 degrees, uh, which can be obtained from 45 and 30. If we subtract 45 minus 30, we obtain 15 degrees. So it means in place of me writing 15 degrees because I do not have 15 from the special angles, but I have 45 and I also have 30. So I can write this as the, uh, as the difference that we have of what? Uh, 45 degrees and 30 degrees. If we subtract these two, we are going to obtain uh, 15 degrees. But the moment we have got this, we are back now to our compound angles. We've got the sine of 45 uh, minus the sine of 30, whereby we've got A and this is our B. Remember the sine of A 
minus b from our formula sheet is going to give us the sine of a, the cosine of b, then minus, yes, you can write as the sine of b, the cosine of a, but you can also write it as the sine of what? The sine of b, the cosine of a. So it's sine a, but here it will be sine b. Here it's cos b, on the other side, it will be cos a. So you just have to interchange. And for sine, it's uh, for sine, the sign that you have there is going to maintain is different from a cos. A cos, the sign changes, all right? But sign, uh, for sign, this one is going to maintain as it is. So our A is 45 degrees. So it is going to be the sign of 45 degrees. Then the cos of B, which is our B, is 30 degrees. So it's going to be cos of uh, 30 degrees minus the sign of B, which is our B, is 30 degrees. So it's going to be the sign of uh, 30 degrees times the cosine of A, of which our A is 45 degrees. So it's going to be the cos of 45 degrees. That is the idea there. So you can now substitute this because we have this uh, from our special angles. We can find the value of N here. Sine 45, remember, you can just take N of this if I'm using this opposite over the hypotenuse. So the sine of 45 is going to be one over the square root of one over the square root of two. But we know that if we rationalize, because we are told to rationalize there, if we rationalize this and multiply by the square root of two over the square root of two, that will be one times square root of two, which is square root of two over the square root of two times the square root of two, which is two. So actually the rationalizing part, even if you are not to show it, just use your calculator. No one is gonna know that you have used a calculator, but uh, that is the uh, actual procedure there. So you can even just use your calculator here. As long as you show your triangles, because, what we need is the answer to say what will be the value for square root of what 45, but this is the right way to have this, all right? So this will be the square root of two over two uh, times the cos of 30 according to this, all right? So remember, this is our Sokatoa. So we are back to our Sokatoa. So cos adjacent over hypotenuse according to 30 degrees, this is the adjacent, and that is the hypotenuse too. So it's gonna be square root of three over two. All right, so we're gonna have the square root of three over two in this case. All right, whatever that you have here minus the sine of 30 for the sine opposite of hypotenuse. So 30, the opposite it's one. So it's going to be one over the hypotenuse, which is two. So that's one over two in this case, as you can see, opposite over hypotenuse. So it's gonna be one over two times the cos of 45. So cos 45 degrees, remember cos is adjacent over the hypotenuse. So from this 45 is adjacent which is one over the hypotenuse, which is square root of two. So as you can see, one over square root of two is the same as what we had for sine 45. So the answer at the end is going to be square root of two over two. So there we are going to have the square root of two over two. And also to note that we know that uh, sine 45 is equal to what? Cos 45. Remember the idea that we talked about that uh, the cos of X is equal to the sine of 90 degrees minus X. So if we have got X, which is cos uh, 45 degrees, it's gonna be cos 90 minus X, which is 45. 90 minus 45 is what? It's 45, so it's, it's, it is equal to sine 45. So these two, they are actually equal. We can also prove that, all right? So that is the good part of maths, guys. We can prove all these things, all right? So now we can simplify. Remember, we are back to our sets uh, where we are multiplying the numbers under the square root together, the square root of three, the square root of two and the square root of three is going to give us the square root of six over two times two, which is a four, minus one times the square root of two, that will be the square root of two over two times two, which is a four. Remember the idea, whether you are dealing with uh, the square root on top or you are dealing with X, you are dealing with Y, as long as the denominators are the same, combine your numerators together. So you're just gonna combine the numerators together. That is the square root of six minus the square root of two, everything over what? Everything over four. And these cannot be simplified. You can only subtract or add the sets if the numbers under the square root are the same. Square root of three plus maybe we've got two square root of three like this. If these numbers under the square root are the same, we can be able to add these terms together, which is going to be Two, uh, three plus two, which will be five square root of three. But if the numbers are under the square root are not the same, you cannot add or subtract. So this, we just leave it as it is like this. We can't add, we can't subtract anything. 
uh, if we have got the numbers that are different there. All right, then question 3.4, uh, given a certain scenario, which is uh, this one, we have uh, actually worked with a lot of questions of this type, uh, which is actually good in our revisions to understand much better. So yeah, I'm not gonna waste much time because we have this type of a question. They were given determine without the use of a calculator, the value of cos cubed X, if tan of X is three over four, and x is an acute angle. So if x is an acute angle, it means we are going to find this in the first quadrant. I explained this whole scenario. So it's gonna be in the first quadrant and that will be our x there. So remember that tan, it's opposite over adjacent from our soccer to us. So we've got opposite over adjacent, which is according to this x, this is the opposite three. The adjacent, which is for you apply your Pythagoras theorem to calculate the third side, three, four, five. So it's gonna be five here if you apply your Pythagoras theorem. H squared is equal to three squared plus four squared. So meaning to say H is gonna be the square root of three squared plus four squared, which is gonna be a five. So that is how you can have your H. And from there, we can now find the cos cubed X. Remember I also uh, mentioned this part very, very clearly that the cosine of uh, to the exponent of n like this is the same as the cosine of x to the exponent of n. Not to say the cosine uh, of x to the exponent of n is cosine, it's cosine of x to the exponent of n. This is wrong. This is totally wrong. They are not, it's not x to the exponent of n, but it's the whole of the cos that you are given there, the whole of this cos, all right? So meaning to say here, we are going to have it in this way that we understand, meaning to say the cosine, uh, the cos cubed X that you are given there is the same as the cosine of X to the exponent of three. That's what we simply have. And we have, we can have this cos X, uh, we can obtain this from our trigonometrical ratios. Remember, so katoa on cos, it's adjacent over the hypotenuse and we have got X here. According to this, this is the adjacent, this is the hypotenuse. So it's going to be four over, four over five in this case. That means the cosine of X here is going to be four over five, which is adjacent over the hypotenuse, but everything has to be raised to the exponent of three. So that's the equivalent of cos cubed X, all right? So meaning to say our cos cubed is going to be four to the exponent of three, which is uh, 64 over five to the exponent of three, which is 125. So even if you use your calculator, no one is gonna know that you have used your calculator to simplify this. You can just use your calculator there to find your answer. All right, so that will be 64 over 125. That's it. So you see how these questions can be given. You just have to play around with the type of question that you are given. 3.5 prove that we are given a certain scenario. In most cases, we are just supposed to work out this, simplify. But now they want us to prove that if we have this, it must give us negative one over tan. All right, that's our question 3.4 in this case. All right, 3.5. So let us see what we have here. The sine of negative X, remember this is a negative angle. If you're talking about negative angle, I mentioned these are the angles going in the clockwise direction and negative X is in the fourth quadrant. And in the fourth quadrant, it's for cost. Remember all students take calculus or the cost concept. So in the fourth quadrant, it's for cost. So that's a sign is going to be a negative in this case. So this will be a negative sign of X. So we are taking in this case from our left-hand side, right? From the left-hand side, so we could have negative sign X. Then we've got tan 90 degrees minus X. All right, tan 90 degrees minus X, we talked about this and we said it's equivalent cot X. Remember, cot X is equivalent to tan 90 degrees minus X, uh, the sign, of X is equal to the cos of 90 degrees minus X. Uh, the cos of X is equal to the sine of 90 degrees minus X. And the tan of, or we talked about this, the tan of X will be equal to cot uh, 90 degrees minus X. So you just have to know this scenario, guys. All right, so that's the tan of 90 degrees minus X in this case here. Uh, is equal to cot x, all right? So that will be, but to the exponent of two. So you're gonna have cot x to the exponent of two like this, all right? And the other way that you could have worked out this is to say tan 
uh, is same as, as sine over cos. So it is going to be tan uh, 90 degrees minus x, which is going to be the sine of 90 degrees minus x over the cosine of 90 degrees minus x like this. But we know that the uh, sine of 90 degrees minus x is uh, cos here. Yeah. Sine 90 degrees minus x is equal to cos x. So this is going to be equal to cos x. So we are going to have this as cos. All right, so for that, so this will be a cos of x on this part. So this will be cos of x over the cos of 90 degrees minus x, which is the sine of x. So cos over sine, that gives us, or this will give us a cot, which is the same as this one that we have. So, uh, so many ways that you can play around with this. It's either that you just have to know this part direct as it is, or you can know it from the sign. If you can know this one for sign, it means you can also know the one for cot and the one for tan, just like that, all right? So let's move on to the cos 90 degrees minus x. Cos 90 degrees minus x is equal to what sin x. I talked about this one. So please just make sure that you watch the introduction of the video, guys, of the trigonometry so that you understand where you missed or where you do not have a proper understanding there. Then I've got the cos of 360 minus x. Remember I said this is found in the fourth quadrant. In the fourth quadrant, as a negative angle, it's minus x. As a positive angle, is 360 degrees minus x. And in the fourth quadrant, this is for cos. So cos is going to be positive, all right? Then sine 180 degrees minus x, this is in the second quadrant. Remember in the second quadrant, that's where we're gonna have our x here and the wall of this angle is gonna be 180 degrees minus x. And in this quadrant, it's for sine. Sine is a positive there. So it means we are going to have sine of x as a positive, right? So that's it. So if we simplify this, it must give us negative one over tan. That's what they are saying. Okay, is that so? Let's see. Uh, let's see what you're gonna have if we are to simplify further. So this will be, uh, we can cancel here. Uh, you can see that we've got the sine of X and the sine of X, this can cancel. So we will be left on top with the negative. Uh, all right, we can even simplify this here. Negative, if you want negative, uh, sine of a cos which is tan but because there's a quad there so it's going to be difficult for us now to change this but you can even work it in uh, in the way that you understand all right so this is trick guys you, the way that you understand we can just leave it like that which is negative uh the sine of x over the cosine of x like this all right which is multiplied to the quad squared of x this one remember i said if the square is affecting the whole cot, it means it's the same as cot squared x like this. All right, but we know that the cot is same as cos over sine. If it is cos over sine, the moment we have got a squared like this, it is going to be cos squared over sine squared. So we are going to have this as cos squared over sine squared, right? So let us just have this. So you're gonna have this as negative. Uh, all right, so, so we've got uh, negative sine x there on top negative uh, sine of x over the cosine of x multiplied to cot. Like I said, cot is same as the cos of x over the sine of x. At the moment we have got a squared, it means the cos has to be squared, the sine also has to be squared. So this is going to be the cos squared of x over the sine squared of x. And there we can simplify because you can see something happening here. Uh, the cos x into the cos squared of x. There are two of them. So you're gonna remain with one cos. The same way, a sine of x into this, we're going to remain with one of the sine x. So at the end, this is going to give us negative cos over sine x and cos over sine, it's a cot. So this would be a negative cot x. This is exactly what we are supposed to have from uh, our simplification. But this is not what we have uh, as our answer. The answer is not given as a negative. It's given as negative one over tan. This is what we know, guys. One over tan, it gives, a, it gives us a cos. Yes, you simplified, you got a cot, but you have to write the way that you are given. So remember that cot is same as what? Negative one over tan. I mean, cot is same as one over tan, but we've got a negative, so it will be minus one over tan x, which is the same thing as the cot x. We are just writing our answer to the way that we're given, and this is exactly what we have on the 
right hand side in this case. All right, so these are the typical questions that you be given. You just have to play around your questions uh, in your simplification in order for you to have exactly uh, these marks that we see and to actually totalize this part having 20 marks on trigonometry. We have to expect a question full of uh, uh, trigonometry as a separate question and that would be worth of 20 marks. So let us revise these typical questions that we have because that is how our exam is going to be related as. So we just have to revise as much as we can. Uh, this can help us to, to maximize for our exams.